So what's going on, Diecast Collectors? This is OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and today I'm going to bring you guys a very different Diecast review. This is not a NASCAR Diecast review or IndyCar Diecast review. Now, before you click on this video, hear me out for a second. Uh, there is another type of motorsports. Uh, as you guys know, I am a motorsports fan that I have uh, really grown to appreciate. I mean, I do got to thank my good buddy, my good buddy Dave Valen and Race Day 2011. Um, they have really helped me love this sport a lot more um and that sport i'm referring to or motorsport in particular is imsa guys uh, every year since 2016 ironically this car i'm about to review uh is based off of a 2016 uh car but on a 2019 livery um the 2016 uh, Six Hours at Watkins Glen, I've been going to that every single year, except for this year because, you know, COVID. But today, it's going to be on a Hot Wheels diecast review on an IMSA throwback livery. It is going to be on the, the 2016 Ford GT Race uh, Ford C800. But as you guys know, that's what this model is based off of. But this is supposed to represent the 2019 Ford GT Castrol throwback livery that they ran at the 24 Hours of Daytona. The Rolex 24 um, from last year. So pretty dang cool looking car. I mean, I know my good buddy, uh, uh, my good buddy, uh, Race Day 2011, apps, uh, already did a diecast review of this. Um, well, a model scale review for from TSM. That is, um, I do got some TSM models to review as well if you guys are curious to, uh, if you guys, uh, first of all, I want to know if you guys are interested in more in IMSA reviews because, um, you know, that's uh, something that I do want to, uh, be a little different, all right? I mean, I know NASCAR diecast reviews are, you know, pretty standard and very simple to make, but, you know, branching out a little bit, because after all, I am a motorsports fan, but this packaging's really cool, and you're probably wondering where I got this. Well, for $12.99, aka $13, bucks, um, got this at Target. Target's been the place to go, not for NASCAR diecast, but for um, Hot Wheels, and they always get the first dibs when the newest waves come out, and this one in particular is pretty dang cool. Uh, we do got a transport that comes to this as well with the Castro livery, but... Um, this uh, this livery man is pretty dang cool but there's the rest of the wave you guys want to collect that but this one in particular i'm more interested in because it is an imsa car so without further ado enough of me just talking away let's go ahead and kick off this diecast review and the official unboxing of the 2019 castrol 4 gt for um gt lamar all right guys so we got this die cast and the die cast transporter out of its box so before we're getting started on this die cast review like i do on my die cast reviews uh let's look at the little um the little accessory that comes with this in this case it is a transporter which is pretty cool um looks like it's an old uh, ford um well here we'll actually read what this is this is a ford c800 i'm guessing that's what that c800 stands for so pretty cool i mean it kind of matches the delivery quite well um but it looks like you can fit two die cast on here so that is pretty cool it does look like they go anywhere because the wheels are locked uh, they got wheel chucks right there so that's pretty dang cool but uh, pretty appropriate because uh there will be a side-by-side -side comparison i will be doing of another 4 gt car that hot wheels um did made in the cold in the car culture series uh very soon but um yeah very nice detail for what we got right here i mean uh the, the hot wheels car culture sets man they have got uh these are a little more high quality than you know the 99 cent to a dollar hot wheels that we all know and somewhat love <laughs> i mean i don't care how old you are guys i mean you're never too old to collect die cast especially hot wheels but that is a really cool uh, accessory we got right there i mean look at those rims Whew. and those are rubber tires as well and they're treaded but now time to get on to the juicy part of this die cast review it is the actual die cast and my god is this castrol livery isn't it beautiful it is very and i mean very beautiful I mean, even if you're not a sports car fan, I mean, this livery, man, is pretty cool. I believe they only ran this once, I believe. As you guys know, uh, 2020, we do not, we no longer have the four GTs because uh, Chip Ganassi Racing uh, shut the team down. Yeah, if you guys are wondering, Chip Ganassi Racing is the one who had the four GTs uh, for what, like, uh, I think they started in 2016, I think, and then all the way up till 2019. Um if I am correct, I mean, I know I'm still kind of a noob when it comes to knowing about IMSA. I mean, I do watch, you know, some of the big races. Um, probably to watch Lime Rock this year, I will say that. But, um, yeah, it, it's pretty cool. I mean, I'm sure the NASCAR and IndyCar fans probably know what IMSA is because you guys know it's all on the same network uh, for NBC. So that's pretty cool. The NBC is like the prime motorsports uh, place to go. But, um, yeah, I mean, um, and... Yeah, a lot of people don't know that there are uh, IMSA diecasts out there. Um, and Hot Wheels has been doing a good job of releasing some of these in some of their car culture waves. And this one in particular is really cool with the Castrol livery. Uh, 
We have see got rubber tires, and of course, um, it, it, due to this car, you know, rolling better, that the, the rear tires are bigger than the small than the uh, front tires. I mean, that's pretty much a trademark addition when it comes to Hot Wheels for performance GT. Um, so it, the the livery right off the bat it is pretty much exactly the same. The sponsors are a little different. Like I can see the mission logo is not supposed to be there; it's supposed to be like somewhere down by where uh, the front is. Um, but for what Hot Wheels was given, this livery. If I am if I'm correct on this, I mean I did look at a photo before I did this review. It's pretty much exactly the same. I mean there and it does supposed to have like red end plates as well with the GT um, logos on it. But Hot Wheels usually doesn't do that. But heck, and also this supposed to be like a 4 GT banner right here. But I'm sure custom makers out there are gonna have a fun time with this. But the casting overall, man. I mean this is my first time ever reviewing the 4 GT casting. Um, pretty spot on i mean hot wheels definitely doing a good job and this is a die cast it's not those those uh very plastic uh and fragile um models that you know most imsa car that they like if you want imsa die cast there's really no such thing as imsa die cast this is probably the only way you can go um they have models which are pretty cool i do recommend spark and tsm um i'll probably get an accurate team penske one since that's gonna be the last year we're gonna have these and you guys know I am a Pagano fan. But anyways, not talking about here. We're talking about the Castro livery. That was, uh, I believe, uh, it. Uh, no, I, I, I believe. I know it did not want uh, the GTL Mount class. All right. For anybody who did, I know there are three different types of classes in IMSA. Well, actually four if you want to count LMP2. But um, there's the um, the DPIs, and then this class is the GTLMs. That's where all the popular cars are, like Corvettes, Porsches, BMWs, and four GTs. Um, and then you also got you also got GT Daytona and LMP2, but you know that's the class we never want to talk about. <laughs> so that's a little uh, rundown of that. But I think overall, I think this car finished like 13th or 14th at the Rolex 24 last year, and it finished fourth in the GTLM class. So it ran better than the 66. I mean, it would have been cool if uh, Hot Wheels actually makes a 66, throw, 66 throwback. And you guys probably wonder well, why they decided to do a throwback. Um, well, if you guys did not know. Uh, last year was IMSA's 50th anniversary. I know, pretty crazy. I mean, uh, some people would not know that IMSA was around that long, but they've had a lot of mergers over the years. Um, but, my God, this is just a beautiful, beautiful livery, guys. I mean, um, I know the logos look a little pixelated, but, you know, Hot Wheels quality. I will say it is better than some of the other die-cast dealers, uh, well, die-cast uh, manufacturers that we know. I mean, I'm looking at you, Greenlight, and uh, <laughs> Lionel Racing. Um but for a first glance, man, I mean, this is probably one I highly would recommend picking up. Even if you're not a big IMSA fan, this is still a great diecast to get. But now it's time to start the side-by-side -side comparison of this car, which is another. Uh, like I said, this is not the first time we've had a 4 GT car released for the car culture sets. We did got one all the way back uh, like a few years ago with the Circuit Legends wave. And here's the primary 4 GT scheme that uh, a lot of people probably should already know. But... And that's pretty cool that they made the 66 and the 67, so that's pretty cool for your stop motion makers out there. But it's pretty nice. I mean, uh, I think the livery is a lot... I, I, this livery, I believe, is almost accurate, but not really, if I'm not mistaken. But this one is really accurate, so Hot Wheels definitely improved over the years when it came to the quality. As you can see, we do got... Um, I mean, pretty much exactly the same. I mean, the, the headlights are different, which are pretty cool. Different color. But uh, I really do like this. I really do like this a lot, guys. This is really cool. You see, it's got the green, um, the the green uh, class marks, which I think is supposed to represent for the 24 hours of Le Mans, if I'm not mistaken, because usually GTLM is red, if I'm not mistaken, because the the green uh, the the green um, number plates are supposed to represent GT Daytona. Yeah, they're also color coded as well for different um, numbers, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, yeah, I mean, uh, pretty dang nice, man. I will say that. So this is really cool. Look at that, guys. Definitely improved on the quality. We'll say that. They even included the LED scored panels, which, you know, IMSA had first before IndyCar. Just saying. A lot more sponsorships. Hot Wheels definitely improved on this. And I'm hoping we can probably get more of these in the future. I mean, we've had some... We've had... Uh, they, I, I, if they could do the Corvette C8, dude, that'd be pretty sick because that's a popular diecast. But I don't know. We'll see down the line. But I am really impressed with this quality from Hot Wheels. And I, um, yeah, and just for you NASCAR fans out there, might as well go and do a side-by-side -side comparison of the Castrol car from Ryan Newman because this goes well, quite well. I mean, I know. I mean, I'm a motorsports fan, so showing all types of motorsports on this channel and this diecast review, it's got to be something. But 
hey, if you guys love the Castrol Newman car, this probably would be a good collection because, you know, these are both Ford products. All right, so it kind of goes well together. But as you can see, quality is a little more better with the uh, Hot Wheels compared to, you know, Lionel. But I do like that a lot, guys. I really do. But anyways, guys, um, oh, yeah, and you're probably wondering who also drove this car as well. Well, I mean, in IMSA, it, a 24-hour race. So they have, like, three different drivers. Uh, they usually have drivers that take shifts, like a working shift, kind of. But that is um, the three guys who were driving this car were Richard Westbrook, uh, Westbrook, if I'm not mistaken. Rob's already laughing his ass off right now, try, me trying to pronunciate that name. But the other two should sound pretty familiar if you guys are IndyCar fans. Ryan Briscoe, who used to be Team Penske associated, kind of oddy driver for Team Ganassi now. <laughs> well, he did one time um, in the eight car. And also, the goat of IndyCar, Scott Dixon. So I know my good friend Derek Lewis is going to love getting this car in his collection. Um, hey, might be a good uh, present for Christmas, I will say that. But anyways, guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this diecast review, this IMSA diecast review of the 2019 uh, Ford GT Castrol livery driven by uh, for Chip Ganassi Racing. Um in the GT Le Mans class. But anyways, guys, it's been OBB, the Diecast News Guy. If you guys enjoyed this IMSA review, hopefully uh, you guys want to comment below if you guys want me to do more of these. I mean, um, seems like you guys don't mind the variety, but I want to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions down below and what you guys think about this car. And, heck, go to your targets right now. You guys might have this one in stock. But anyways, guys, it's been OBB, the Diecast News Guy, and I will see you guys on another Diecast review, whether it's IMSA, NASCAR, or IndyCar. You know what I'll be reviewing very soon.